really nice March 16th to look forward to today with lots of sunshine and temperatures up into the low and mid 80s. Just amazing for this time of year. And then tonight, clear to partly cloudy and turning a bit cooler behind a cold front, but nothing drastic. Lows in the upper 40s, and then for Thursday, partly to mostly sunny and cooler, but still above normal, with high temperatures in the low and mid-70s. Now, more substantial cooling is likely as we head toward Friday and the weekend. I'm Greg Fischel in the Weather Center. Thanks very much, Greg. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday. This is March the 16th, the day after the big primary. Some heart breaks, heart breaks breaking this morning, some happy, cheerful noise going on out there, but it's over for North Carolina, at least for right now. 56 degrees on the outside, mostly clear, getting up to about 82 for our daytime high today. Weekend's going to be kind of nice all the way through till Saturday. We have a 40% chance of some isolated showers developing on Saturday and Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night, and clearing out of here again for Monday. Mostly sunny Monday with highs around 59. Now, we're getting up to about 82, which is summertime weather, right? Highs around 82 today with wind gusting to 19 miles per hour right here in the foothills beautiful beautiful weather today we're being kind to the wives of all the police officers in our area wives of the police officers who have to wonder about them every time they go out on a call so uh, we salute the wives of the law enforcement folks around our area today and if you know one of them uh give them a big hug and uh, let them know you're praying for them wives of law enforcement this morning is our be kind to emphasis and we hope you'll join us in that. Seven minutes after seven o'clock, and we have these death announcements. Geneva Lowing of Shelby died Saturday at White Oak Manor Nursing Home in Shelby. A graveside service will be in the Round Hill Baptist Church Cemetery at two o'clock today with Reverend Perry Jones officiating. Burial will be at Round Hill Baptist Church Cemetery. Mike Vahan's Funeral Home and Cremation Services in charge of the arrangements for Geneva Lowing of Shelby. Betty Jean Scruggs Hartley, age 89, of Burlwood Rod Charlotte, died Thursday at her home. Thursday, March 10th, a graveside memorial service be held at 2 o'clock in the afternoon today. The graveside service will be held 2 o'clock today at Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church Cemetery. No formal visitation has been planned. The pageant and King Mortuary is in charge of the arrangements for Betty Jean Scruggs Hartley. Angela Joan Cole Baynard, age 59, of Peace Drive, Forest City, died Saturday at Hospice House of Rutherford County. A graveside service will be held at 2 o'clock in the afternoon today at the Eternal Hills Memorial Park. Visitation will follow the service at the cemetery. The family will be at the home of her daughter on Tom's Lake Road in Forest City. The Patchett and King Mortuary in charge of the arrangements for Angela Joan Cole Baynard. Gertrude Sinclair, 97, of Lake Lure, died Monday at White Oak Manor in Rutherfordton. Funeral services will be held 3 p.m. Thursday at Bills Creek Baptist Church. Burial will follow in the church cemetery. The family will receive friends one hour prior to the service at the church. Crow's Mortuary is assisting the family of Gertrude Sinclair of Lake Lure. Barbara McMahon Good, age 73, of Greenville, formerly of Spindell, died Sunday. The graveside service will be at Southern Baptist Church Cemetery at 1 o'clock Friday. Burry will be at Southern Baptist Church Cemetery. The family will greet friends following the service. McMahon's Funeral Home and Cremation Service serving the family of Barbara McMahon Good. Paul Smith Toms, age 98, of Old Caroline Road, Forest City, died Saturday at his residence. The funeral will be held at 11 o'clock Saturday, March 19th, in the Pageant of King Chapel. Burial will follow in the Rutherford County Memorial Cemetery. Visitation will be held from 10 unto 11 on Saturday at the mortuary prior to the service. Pageant of King Mortuary is serving the family of Paul Smith Toms. Just over 32,000 jobs were created in January, the majority of them in the restaurant, hotel, and amusement park businesses. On the other side of the ledger, Pennsylvania came up short, losing over 14,000 jobs. The big picture, according to an AP write-up, is that fewer states gained jobs in January. 
The best positive spin they've got is to say that the job market is generally improving, though many Americans are no longer working or looking for work and wage growth remains tepid. Now, what you will not hear in any detail is how many people are working for less money than before or how many are working part-time jobs because full-time jobs are scarce. The impact of Obamacare and the regime's war on coal will certainly not be factored in. And when Hillary on the campaign trail vows to stay the course on Obama's policies, pay attention. Here's what she's promising to deliver. More of the same. A stagnant economy, growing at Washington, limping along with few high-paying jobs created, and more layoffs right around the corner. All the while government gets bigger, and your benefits package maybe gets bigger. No wonder she's having coughing fits. Hi, I'm Kyle Cox, founder and owner of Blindster.com. At Blindster.com, we've sold millions of blinds to hundreds of thousands of satisfied customers since 2010. Many people think it's easier and less expensive to buy blinds from a home improvement warehouse. We needed new blinds, so I measured my windows and my husband and I went to a store nearby. We bought some faux wood blinds right off the shelf, but when we installed them, they didn't quite fit our windows. Thankfully, I found Blindster.com. I could not believe their prices. They had custom-made blinds for less than I paid for ready-made blinds. I placed an order and my blinds arrived less than two weeks later. The installation was easy and they fit perfectly. I couldn't be happier. Many people make the same mistake. Save money and have peace of mind because Blindster guarantees your blinds will fit even if you make a mistake in measuring. Right now, all Rush listeners receive 30% off any order. Just use the code RUSH at checkout. Visit Blindster.com today. That's B-L-I-N-D-S-T-E-R dot com. Blindster dot com. WCAB, giving the foothills of the Carolinas. Today's country hits and yesterday's memories. 24 hours a day. We're WCAB. WCAB. RS Express on Railroad Avenue should be the only stop you'll need. The RS Express inspection station can get you back on the road and keep you legal. RS Express station has two lanes to get you in and out in no time. They also carry wiper blades and they'll rotate your tires. Complete car care all together. RS Speedy Loop. RS Service includes transmission flush, RS car wash, and RS inspection. Count on Chris and his team to take care of your car needs. Railroad Avenue, Ruth. Well, Farmer's Friend Feed, Seed, and Supplies right across the road here from us, ready for springtime, and they can help you get ready for springtime. Farmer's Friend Feed, Seed, and Supply. Fertilizer, they have plenty of rainbow fertilizer. The 10, 10, 10, 50 pound bag, or the 10, 10, 10 regular bag, 50 pound bag is 1037. And the triple 17, 17, 17, 50 pound bag, 1350. And there's some special dog food, 1199, 40 pound bag. 1818, and you can go by there and register to win a Mary Tiller. Yep, you can give that away in uh, April the 29th. We'll have that drawing right here live on the radio, but be sure to go by and register. You'll enjoy winning that, should you win. And remember, they have delivery available at Farmer's Friend Feed, Seeding Supplies. Ask about that. They're on Whiteside Road, 188 Whiteside Road. Phone number is 287-3272, and they're open Monday through Saturday. Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30. Saturday, 7.30 until 2. Come see them. Farmer's Friend, Feed, Seed, and Supplies. On March 15, 1881, the Benson Tombstone Stage was held up. Although not intended as such, it ended up being one of the causes for the OK Corral shootout. On the other hand, the two intended objectives of the holdup were not accomplished. The main objective was the assassination of Wells Fargo shotgun guard Bob Paul. Paul had gone to work for Wells Fargo and as a guard had hampered the activities of the Cowboys. The word around town was that he was to become the Pima County Sheriff, so the Cowboys wanted to get rid of him. The assassination failed because when the stage departed Tombstone, stage driver Bud Philpot had gotten stomach pains and Bud had exchanged positions with Paul. Orders were to kill the guard, which they did, but it was Philpot instead of Paul. Bob Paul was responsible for the robbers not accomplishing their second objective, the theft of $26,000. When Philpot was shot, Bob grabbed his shotgun and fired off both barrels. 
One robber was killed and the noise of the shotgun spooked the horses. As the stagecoach was careening out of control, Paul climbed down, secured the reins, and brought the stage safely into Benson. Later, Bob Paul became the Pima County Sheriff. This six foot six inch, 240 pound mountain of a man using a shotgun brought in bad guys, stopped lynchings, and hanged many a man legally. It always seemed that he was able to dodge that fatal bullet. That is until 1893 when he couldn't dodge the one called cancer. He died on March 26, 1901. You've just heard another story from Chronicle of the Old West. I'm Dakota Livesay. Well, in those local races last night in the County Commissioner District 3 race, if you just wake it up have not heard, it was a close to run all night with uh, Eddie Holland and Jerry Weiss, the two Democrats vying for that seat. Eddie Holland did win 2,575 votes, Jerry Weiss 2,315. And in the Republican primary for Register of Deeds, Rachel Thomas won 4,394 and Chuck Martell 2,661. Now let's go to the phone to get started with our news hour. Find out what's been happening around your neighborhood. And with me on the phone right now is Officer Brandel. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Jim. I'm doing great. How about you? Doing really good. It's a little, uh, still a little dark out there. I'm used to it being daylight by now, but it's uh, that eastern uh, savings time has sort of got things later coming on. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty good day, though. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, sure is. I'm glad to have it. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm not complaining. Tell us what's on the report from the past 24 hours. past 24 hours, Sheriff's Office has answered 169 calls, processed 20 arrests, and currently have 158 in the jail. Under our arrest reports, we have a James Glover, a 30-year-old black male of Spindale, charged with traffic and cocaine, possession with intent to manufacture, sell, or deliver Schedule 2, and maintaining a place for a controlled substance, given a $50,000 secure bond. We have a Melissa Barnes, 40-year-old white female of Far City, charged with failure to appear on a misdemeanor, given a $4,000 secure bond. We have a Shana Benfield, 33-year-old white female of Spindale, charged with simple assault and damage to uh, property, given a uh, 48-hour hold. We have a Darren Martin, 29-year-old white male of Spindale, charged with failure to appear on misdemeanor, given a $500 secure bond. And we have a Bobby Cook, 32-year-old white male of Allenburg, charged with felony larceny, given a $5,000 secure bond. Under our instance, we have a Richard LaForge of Highway 64 in Rutherfordton, uh, reported a larceny of a dog and misdemeanor larceny, Taken there was a German Shepherd and uh, two two drop cords. Uh, we have a William Smith of Landrum, South Carolina, reported a obtaining property by false pretense and attempted obtaining property by false pretense. Incident occurred at the bank on Butler Road in Far City. Uh, two subjects attempted to cash uh, fraudulent checks. Um, we have a Kathy Robson from Newton Cole Road in Forest City reported a financial card fraud and obtained property by false pretense. We have a Candy Austin, Gun Club Road, Boston, reported larceny of farm. Taken now was a 22 caliber handgun. And we have Bubba's General Store, Main Street, Chimney Rock reported a felony larceny. Taken there was one orange golf gas pump. And that's all we have for you this morning, Jim. One golf gas pump. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess it was an antique they had sitting yeah. out there. Yeah. But it had to be somebody from somewhere else. Nobody in Rutherford County would steal anything, would they? Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> um, I don't know if they'd, you know, they could have stole it for scrap metal or they could have stole it since it's an antique, but yeah. you never know. Well, it's always something going on. I appreciate the work you're doing, and uh, you have a safe day out there. Thank you, Jim. Thank Stay you. cool. Bye-bye. David Brenda reporting in this morning for us from the Sheriff's Department. 20 minutes now past 7. 
Come and see why the F-Series is the best-selling vehicle for 38 straight years. There's something to this. The best-selling truck, and you could own one thanks to the excellent deals at Sisk Family Ford. If you want one, get it this week. It may be the all-new redesigned Ford Edge that will make you happy. If so, the choices are good today, and special Sisk Family Ford prices are underway right now. Come see all the new cars and trucks at your friendly family Ford dealer, Sis Family Ford, Oak Street, Forest City. We're being kind today to the spouses of all the law enforcement, all the folks, all the spouses that wonder about their guys and gals when they go out on a call. So we salute you today. Thanks for being understanding and loving and supportive to the spouses of all the law enforcement. We're being kind to you today. Susan is on the radio with us now to give us the 911's communication report. Susan, good morning. Good morning. What is on your report? In the past 24 hours, Rutherford County Sheriff's Office 911 Communication Center has processed 505 911 calls and administrative calls, which consisted of 54 for EMS, 12 for rescue, 169 for Sheriff's Office, 83 for Forest City, 23 for Rutherford, 29 for Lake Lure, and 50 for Spindale. Bostick Fire Department responded to a grass fire, Forest City to a vehicle accident, Rutherford to a vehicle accident, and to a fire alarm assisted by Spindale. And that's it for this morning. Thanks, Susan. Have a great day. You too. And we're checking next with uh, Daniel Town right after we check in with drop in there's one close to you major lee's deli at the drop in food stores you can get the best of both worlds now or later thirsty now well how about any size fountain drink up to 32 ounces for only 99 cents you can't beat that or 20 ounce coke or pepsi products two for 250 all sun drop products two for two dollars thirsty later Take home a Pepsi 12-pack, two for $7, or two-liter Coke products for only 99 cents. Let's see, that's Coke, Sprite, Mellow Yellow, Minute Maid, Fanta, and Seagram Ginger Ale. A lot of great choices. Hungry now? Well, grab a delicious chicken wrap for $1.99, or two for three fifty. How about a chicken strip snack that comes with two strips, four wedges, and a roll for only three ninety nine? Hungry later? Well, feed the entire family with eight-piece family meal that comes with, I like this, two breasts, two thighs, two wings, two legs, 12 wedges, 12 ounce, uh, eight ounce coleslaw, four rolls, and three sauces for only eleven ninety nine. Now that'll feed a lot of people. Whether you want it now or later, Major Lee's has you covered either way. You know, it's majorly good chicken. Come on, drop in. Ruby Taylor, how are things down in Danieltown? Well, the fire department's quiet, and on the birthday calendar, I've got uh, Mickey Mosley and Jerry Ficklin having birthdays today, and hope they have a nice day, and then Mr. and Ms. Keith Ezell is having anniversary, and hope they have a nice day, and the signs are in the breast today and tomorrow, and that's all i got, Jim. Ruby, I do appreciate it, and have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. The following is a medical minute from Rutherford Regional Health System. Recent statistics indicate that nearly half of all men and a third of all women in the United States will experience a cancer diagnosis within their lifetime. If you or a loved one experiences cancer, you should choose a cancer program based on its advanced technology, its coordination of care among specialists, its patient navigation program, its convenient support services, and its cancer survivorship program. Here in Rutherford County, the cancer program of Rutherford Regional Health System features all of that and more. In fact, the cancer program at Rutherford Regional is a nationally certified cancer program, which means access to the full scope of services to diagnose, treat, rehabilitate, and support patients with cancer. To learn more, visit MyRutherfordRegional.com and click on the Services tab. 
Save-A-Lot Grocery Store is your next stop to saving big money. You'll find loads of merchandise with incredible low prices and hundreds of name brand items and with clean, spacious aisles, that'll make shopping a pleasure. Take advantage of the popular Pick 5. Get five grocery items at a low price of only $19.99, including meat products. Save-A-Lot has a great produce section with all your favorite fruits and vegetables. Hours are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sundays, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's Save-A-Lot Grocery Store in the White Oak Plaza near Big Lots. Now it's 725. Let's head toward Rumbling Ball overlooking beautiful Lake Lurie to a man we talked to for many years here on the radio. Gary, good morning. How you doing? Hey, Jim. How you doing? Doing fine. They got you working again today, huh? Yeah, uh, just passing through. Yeah? <laughs> just passing through. On your way, uh, on your way to while. Florida, right? Yeah, well, not now. It's getting too, too warm to be down there now. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, head back down that way one of these days again for a few days, I guess. You been doing all right? You been doing okay? Yeah, doing good. How about yourself? Doing, doing great. Staying busy, trying to, trying to make folks think I'm working hard. Feel like summer instead of spring, don't it? It does. <laughs> yeah, we about. Uh, I was talking, sitting on about 51 degrees this morning. Cooled down a little bit overnight, but we was up around 82 yesterday. So we said they're calling for a record breaking high today. So yeah, it's gonna be back in the low 80s again. Warm, really? Yeah. And got several rowing teams still in there, out, out and about every morning and all day, and they've, they've had a good week, looks like. And got a few bear reports starting to come out again now, so I guess the warm weather's got them got them out and running about. Uh, I think Steve seen one last night. Really? He worked over the shift last night. He seen one running across the road out here last night, and had a couple of sightings up here and around the, the condo, so... I guess they're coming back out in this warm weather. They're waking up, aren't they? Yeah. I hope we don't have as many as seen as we did last year. That was that was about everyday thing last year. But as long as they figure they can get food, I guess they'll come out and try to find it. Well, keep them up there, will you? I will. And, uh, <laughs> everything up good to go up here, Jim. Yeah, it's good to talk to you. You keep up, keep up the good work and enjoy yourself when you can, and I'll see you next time. All right. We'll talk to you later. See you. Bye-bye. 27 past 7 o'clock. That's Gary Wilson on the radio this morning. It's great to get discounts at the beginning of the year. And thanks to the Recliner Center, you can save 10% off all love seats, recliners, and sofas. Save 10% off spring air bedding. 2016 starts the 30th year of business for the Recliner Center. And J.D. and Marie Shook are looking forward to 30 more years to serve their great customers. They're the home of Flex Steel and Lane Recliners, Sofas, and Love Seats. Use your tax refund during this first of the year sale and be comfortable for for many years to come. J.D. and Marie are cutting back on their hours, but will never cut back on service and quality. New hours at the Recliner Center are Wednesday through Friday, 9 to 5, Saturday, 9 to 2, closed Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Come on by soon and pick out the recliner or sofa that fits you best, then get the discounted Recliner Center price. The Recliner Center on Cooper's Gap Road in Rutherfordton. Here's what our customers think about McCurry Deck Chevrolet Buick GMC. I love my McCurry Deck Buick. I love my McCurry Deck Chevrolet. We, we love, love our, our McCurry, McCurry Deck, Deck GMC. GMC. We guarantee you'll love McCurry Deck Chevrolet Buick GMC for a city. I am definitely a McCurry Deck customer for life. I love the price and the McCurry Deck Customer for Life Rewards Program. It gives you up to $3,000 or more in rewards. Take the easy drive to savings. McCurry Deck for a city. Discover the rewards of being a customer for life. So, uh, 29 now past 7 o'clock here on WCAB's Wednesday morning uh, call around and report. And we're going to Hudlo area. And Bob Hodge, good morning. Well, good hump day morning here. Yeah, it certainly is. I'll tell you, springtime is knocking on our door, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah, I was looking at the weather there a while ago. It looked like oh, wintertime might be a knocking by the <laughs> weekend there and again. <laughs> isn't that something? Well, I these, know it. These are, huh? Pear trees are blooming, the flowers are popping up, and we're going to have some cold weather coming up this weekend. Yeah, down in the 30s there, low Mm -hmm. 30s, so that don't sound good at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, maybe uh, they won't get frost bit too bad there, or won't have too big a frost. Maybe maybe the wind will blow or something. I was going to say, maybe if the wind will keep blowing, it'll keep some of that from freezing down. Yeah. 
but uh, you know, uh, it could possible. You know, some of the alpha trees probably start budding and blooming out, and that's bad on the alpha farmers there. Mm-hmm. Uh, have cold snaps like that. Jim up here with the fire department, we had one miracle call during the night, and no fire wreck call, so that's good. Let's say happy anniversary to Warren and Darren Sprouts this morning. And that's about it. Everything is running along good up here, and it's hump day, and look like the sun's going to come out and going to have another nice day up here today. So well, we'll, we'll have to put on our Bermuda shorts today where I'm around. Well, yeah, up around 80 degrees there, yeah. but gosh, that's going to hurt when it gets back down the high in the 40s and 50s there, and, <laughs> and yeah. lows in the 30s, but uh, it won't be long. Well, when the first day of spring looks like it's going to come in like winter time, don't it? I know it. It sure does. Uh, uh, crazy weather. Jim, you take care, and have a good day, and I'll be talking to you in the morning. Bob, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, I don't know if you've had an opportunity yet to do this, but I hope you will. If you're in downtown Forest City, I'll make a trip to downtown Forest City and have lunch with Ellie May. Ellie Mays, right there in town, across from the fountain, uh, Main Street, Forty City. You'll find a great restaurant, uh, doing a great job over there, serving a lot of people, and they'd love to have you come by if you haven't been yet. And when you go into Ellie Mays, tell them Jim Bishop sent you over there. If you like salad, they got a small chef, a small crispy chicken salad, a small oven roasted, and or your choice of turkey or, or chicken. And they've got a lot of things on the menu that will make a great, great uh, light lunch for you. Or if you're a heavy eater, they've got some things that will make a good heavy lunch for you. The, their burger baskets are outstanding. You'll also find some oven-roasted gourmet sandwiches like hot off the grill, served with a side ch- choice. That's the turkey. Uh, also ham and cheese, a roast beef for chicken, uh, barbecue chicken. for And for the children 12 and under, under. Twelve and under, they got little critters, hamburger with side choice only four eighty five. So they they'll serve the kiddos too with a good menu. Check Ellie Mays out. Lunch menu Tuesday through Saturday eleven to three. It's a great place, and uh, go see them and tell them Jimbo said come by. The entire team at Crow's Funeral Home and Cremation Services can help you with options available. They will help you find a balance between the emotional, spiritual, and financial needs of your loved one. During this time, it's important to turn to someone you can trust and depend on. Crow's Mortuary and Crow's Mortuary and Crematory has a long history of trust and dependability. Crow's Mortuary and Crematory. That's 286-2304. Farm Bureau Insurance doesn't hire celebrities to push auto coverage. We think people might like to make decisions based on service and savings, not just because that guy from that show says it's a good idea. Instead of faces you know from your TV, we offer faces you know from your neighborhood because we're headquartered in North Carolina with local agents right in your town. That's really the only thing we want to be famous for. North Carolina Farm Bureau Insurance, helping you is what we do best. In Rutherford County, please call 287-2428. North Carolina Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company, Farm Bureau Insurance of North Carolina, Inc., Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Surprise is up next uh, from the Cherry Mountain Fire District. Let's find out what news is happening over there. Sue, good morning. Good morning, Jim. You feeling okay today? Doing okay. Good. Glad to hear it. What's on the report? Well, I didn't have any calls from the fire department. We were gone most of the day. We went back to Winston yesterday. He got this blood drawn and got the drops made and started putting them in, so we're just praying they're going to help him. But I got 47 degrees this morning, and it's going to be another really nice day, looks like. And don't have any birthdays on my calendar for today, and nothing on Fairview, so nobody celebrating over this way. And in my announcement, tonight will be the last night of our revival down at Duncan's Creek Presbyterian Church. Starts at 7 p.m. Don Ledbetter is our speaker tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me, he had a good sermon last night and has special music each night. The Bear Walla group will be there tonight, so we're looking forward to that. That's Gary McCurry and his group. And as far as I know, that's the only announcement I have right now, so it's just quiet and calm over this way. Looking for a good day, and I hope you'll have one, Jim. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. I hope things do work out. I hope those tests continue to be good. Thank 
to you. And I'll see you next time. Okay. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, hearing can be uh, very, very important, particularly for folks as they begin to age. They, they start losing their hearing many times. Everybody does it, but sometimes there is a reason for that. But the good part of that is many times it can be corrected with a hearing instrument. And Miracle Ear is making them so small anymore, you hardly know they're there. If you have any questions about hearing instruments and having questions about what might be going on, go have that free hearing test. It's a very free uh, Lisa Terry is a hearing specialist. She does a beautiful job over there, helps a lot of folks, and she'd be glad to help you. So if you do feel like you need a hearing instrument, why don't you check with Lisa Terry before you do anything else. And enjoy the springtime and enjoy the fun of the grandkids uh, coming in by and telling you how much they love you. And remember, a hearing loss is more noticeable than a hearing instrument. And Miracle Ear is doing some fabulous things right now. 447-7716 is a phone number to call, 447-7716, and talk with Lisa Terry. She's in her office in Forest City on Tuesdays and Thursdays, other times by appointment. Folks, I'm happy to announce to you that Quick Lots Half Price Bargain Store is back in town and open at the Tri City Mall. After some restructuring, Quick Lots Half Price Bargain Store is now specializing in name brand small appliances and high end toys and many other items at Quick Lots discount prices. Vacuums, coffee makers, humidifiers, microwaves, and so much more. And coming soon, a new electronics department featuring laptops, cell phones, computers, and more. Check out the Curiosity Center. Be great for students and collectors. Insects enclosed in glass. There's a frog, tarantula, butterfly, and a whole lot more. If you sell online or the flea market, you can buy in bulk at Quick Lots and make yourself a lot of money, and Samuel can give you instructions on how to make it more profitable. It's worth a stroll through. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Quick Lots half price bargain store in the Tri City Mall. Those insects enclosed in glass are fascinating. I saw those. It's really interesting. Any student in school would be glad to see those, and particularly uh, those of you who have uh, smaller kids want to show them the detail of a, of a spider or a, any kind of insect. I think they've got a tarantula there if it hasn't already been purchased. It would be great for classrooms as well. Go by uh, Quick Lots and look at those and see if you find something that might be of interest to you. In yesterday's election here in Rutherford County, there were 13,769 ballots cast out of 43,530 eligible voters. Uh, that's about 31 percent, a little better than 31 percent of the voters. So those folks has an inter- have an interest in what's happening. The rest of the folks, I guess, just could care less. But 31 percent of the, all those people in the county that were eligible to vote, most of them didn't go. But we had a great turnout anyway, in spite of those folks who sitting around and not voting. Let's go up to Union Mills now and check in with Brenda Kelly. Brenda, good morning. Good morning. How are you on this wonderful Wednesday? It is a wonderful Wednesday, and I'm, I'm feeling wonderful. And, and we're going to have a beautiful day, aren't we? We sure are. Already yeah. off to a good start. But, but it, it's going to get cold the weekend. And my peach tree out here, it's in full bloom. It's so pretty and pink, but after... When is it Sunday night when it's supposed to get down to freezing? Yes. And, and and it'll be black then. It won't be pretty. But the little butterflies and the honeybees are just had it covered. So that's good. Well, I hope uh, I hope it don't kill uh, those uh, Bradford pear trees. They just sort of seem like they just came out overnight. I know it, yeah. We had the little buds on ours there in the front yard, and uh, then the next day it seemed like they were all in full bloom. And then you start sneezing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've already started. <laughs> but we hope everybody's having a good day today. I've got 48 degrees on the front porch. Birthdays today and anniversaries. We've got Catherine Previtt, Kenny Craig, Johnny Daddle, Vaughn Goforth. On Round Hill, i got Erwin Clemens' birthday. And on Macedonia, I've got uh, Alice Lawrence' birthday. And it's Alice and Joyce Lawrence' anniversary. So we hope these people have a great old big day on their special day. And... Uh, we asked uh, Joyce uh, Sunday at church how many years they've been married. They've been married 55 years. That's great, eh? Well, that's fantastic, yeah. Yeah. yeah they deserve, yeah. A, they deserve a medal. That's right. You just don't see that hardly anymore. They'll be lucky if, if they stay married 55 days. <laughs> <laughs> 
It'd be nice if the younger folks had that commitment to stick, <coughs> stick yeah. together. Mm-hmm. For better that's, all I, that's all I got going on up here. I don't have any announcements so far this week, but uh, we hope everybody enjoys the day and get out and do something good. It's going to be a beautiful day. I'm for that. There you go. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right, bye. Brenda Kelly out of Union Mills reporting this morning with her report. It's 40 minutes past 7, and today we're being kind to the spouses of all the law enforcement in this area. Uh, when they go out on a call, it's always nervous and anxious, I'm sure. And the spouses of all these law enforcement folks, we salute you. Hang in there. Juggling a career, responsibilities at home, and caring for an aging parent can be a tough job to handle. But thank goodness for Rutherford Life Services. Rutherford Life Services may be able to help you. They offer a positive, happy environment for adults who need a little bit of extra care during the day. They have trained professionals that monitor medical needs, assist with personal care, and also plan fun activities such as crafts, music, and fitness to make their day more enjoyable and safe. Caregivers are provided with the peace of mind knowing that their loved ones are being well cared for. To learn more about Rutherford Life Care Services, call 288-1697. Again, that's 288-1697. Here's Herman, Clipside reporter. Good morning, Herman. Good morning, Miss Jim. Nice cool outside, isn't it? Well, it's looking pretty good out there right now. Yeah, yeah it's going to look like it's going to be a pretty nice day. It's uh, 56 outside up here. Well, that's not too bad, but it's not like being down in the teens, is it? That's exactly right. Not like being uh, in, not like being in uh, Chicago. I heard that. Well, I don't, I, I don't care nothing about being in Chicago. I don't care what the weather is. <laughs> It's just not my part of the country. Let's see, Jim. I reckon everything's going on quiet down here. No, nothing out of the ordinary. Not even much traffic this morning. I don't know. I've noticed up ever since about five o'clock. Everything's it's just kind of slow. It's always a curiosity about some mornings the traffic is heavier than other mornings in the middle of the weekend. I never have understood that. I can come into work and there's a lot of traffic on the road. I may stop in at one of the places to get a cup of coffee on the way in and there'd be nobody there. Some mornings the place is loaded. And I thought, wonder what the difference is. Yeah, I don't know. Why everybody has, everybody goes at one time, looks like, don't it? Yeah, yeah. So everything else is pretty quiet. Yeah, as far as I know, it's quiet down here. I don't even have a birthday today. I can't find my regular birthday calendar. I don't know. Somebody's misplaced it somewhere. I like to find something. We're going to have to get a string and tie that around your neck, I believe. Ah, yeah. I see different ones. Daughters comes in and cleans the beef. They put it somewhere. I don't know. I wouldn't think they'd throw it away. I usually keep it laying on that little old stand there beside of my chair. But, uh, well, they didn't like it being there, I don't reckon. Well, maybe you can locate it by tomorrow, and uh, we'll look uh, look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. All right. Appreciate it, Jim. You have a good one. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Clipside reporter Herman Jones in this morning, 743. We just had a report there are three donkeys loose on Camp Creek Road. They're just standing there watching the traffic go by. So if you've lost your donkeys, uh, they've got them there on Camp Creek Road. I'm not sure how far out that road it is, but go check them out. The three donkeys running loose on Camp Creek Road. Everybody needs a good donkey, right? Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I do like to do business with Southern folks. Uh, you see on TV from time to time these companies that advertise that they'll come and do you carpet and floor covering. I don't know anything about them, do you? But I do know about Southern Carpet, and many of you do as well. So why not do business right here at home with uh, good Southern folks? They got Bruce Hardwood, Appalachian Hardwood, Ceramic Tile, Armstrong Vinyl, Tarkhead Flooring, a long-lasting tradition of quality. Nothing compares to their personalized in-store attention that you get at Southern Carpet. You don't know what you might be getting when you order something over the telephone 
or through the internet like that. When you can walk in the store and look at it and touch it and feel it, say, I like that, that looks good, I th- that's what I want. They'll come out and do an estimate, and you'll be happy you made your chance to do business at Southern Carpet. The phone number is 2450310. 2450310. If you really want to see some good looking pictures, go to the website at southerncarpet.net. Bendell Drug, your hometown pharmacy since 1925, wants to say a special thank you to the community for voting us, Spindell Drug Company, the number one pharmacy in Rutherford County, Spindazzle, the number one gift shop in Rutherford County, and the Spinning Bean, number one coffee shop in Rutherford County. See what all the buzz is about and visit Spindell Drug, Spindazzle, and the Spinning Bean today at 109 West Main Street in Spindell. We look forward to seeing you. Now we're going to Ellenboro, Luther Gilligan. Good morning. Good morning, it's supposed to be downtown Ellenboro, where it's everything quiet after the election. Hey, have you lost any donkeys? Have you lost your donkeys? we got three missing, or three on the loose up at Camp Creek Road. The what? Three donkeys loose up on Camp Creek Road. Did you lose your donkeys? No, but I'll take one. Anybody <laughs> got one I want to get rid of? <laughs> what would you do with it? Give it to Reed Hilton. Give it to Reed Hilton. He have donkeys. I think that donkey down here pasture. Well, I think he got donkeys and sheep. I believe. He, then I get a bit of Lee over here. He's got donkeys over there. He got two or three over around his place, which is. Uh, I know that's one. I'd be close to Reed's pasture, not far away. But hey, it's quiet as morning. The duck is not blaring. The uh, orchard not whining. And uh, just the radios are going. And it's just telling all of everything. But it's nothing. I miss it. Part of my had one medical call. Other than that, they have been quiet. Nothing going on with them. The election is over. Nothing going on out there. We voiced our opinion yesterday. And. Some of us won, some of us lost, and hey, that's the name of the game. That's the way it works. You win, you win, let's win some, some hope for the best. So we'll see what happens come, what, November. Mm-hmm. That's right. Or June or sometime. Well, this this election is November. Well, what we have for birthday, I did see Dawson Putman is having one, and also K. Putman is having a birthday today. And Leonard and Miss Nina go forth up here. They're having a wedding anniversary today. So I hope these people have a great day and enjoy their day. Come on, I'm going to have a good time today. Jim, you have a great day up there. We'll talk to you tomorrow. I appreciate it, Luther. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Take right. care now. Bye-bye. Time for birthdays and anniversaries for this 16th day of the month. The call yours in to us now. We've just cleared the phone lines for birthdays and anniversaries. 287-3356. Todd standing by to take those calls. Hey, if your air conditioner is not working good, you need to go to Brad's record service and let them take care of that for you. Get your air conditioner service while this hot weather is coming. It's going to be hot for the next few days, and it's going to be cool. It's going to be hot again. So go ahead and get that done. And they, uh, Brad can do all kinds of complete garage service. In addition to towing you should you be stalled or somewhere, you can do that as well. Or if you get locked out of your car, your keys inside, he can get those out for you pretty quickly without tearing anything up. You can trust assured that Brad Record Service goes beyond the call of duty to help his customers. He can help you too. Let me give you a phone number to call. It's 287 2111. 287 2111. Brad's Record Service in Spindell on Missouri Street. And it'd be time to be thinking about those air conditioners in your, in your car. I don't want you to be sweating. You know, you don't have to settle for second or third best when you need a plumber. When Umstead Plumbing is just a phone call away. Since 1973, the Umstead family has been serving homeowners and builders with the best of service. Eric and Chad are continuing the family business, and I know you'll be satisfied with their prompt service. From unclogging a drain to replacing fixtures and appliances to remodeling jobs. Their top quality work, fair prices, and punctual service has made them the area's leading plumbing firm. Why don't you give them a call? Locally owned and operated at 245-7302. Experience plus equipment equals excellence. Umstead Plumbing, 245-7302. Now that's getting the job done. 
Don't you really want a new mower this year? She cut those gra- the grass and those weeds down. Well, Ace Equipment Sales and Service can help you accomplish that. It's the time now to purchase that Husker barn because there's a good sale going on at Ace Equipment. They got uh, mowers, tillers, and trimmers. Listen to some of the springtime specials. Husqvarna front tine tillers regularly priced four forty nine. Knock a hundred dollars off of that. It's on sale for three ninety nine. Are the Husqvarna rear tine tillers regular five ninety nine on sale for four ninety nine? Knock a hundred dollars off. Husqvarna mower starting at fourteen ninety nine. Forty two inch cut with a three year warranty. Push mowers starting at one hundred forty nine dollars. Zero turn mowers, those forty six inch cut. Twenty three ninety nine are the Hustler Zero Turn twenty seven ninety nine, and Co Trimmer starting at one fifty nine. So you get a really good deal right now at Ace Equipment Sales and Service on the mower that you really want to have for your yard. Impress your neighbors with your mower from Ace Equipment Sales and Service. And if you need boots, they got a great selection of Rocky Georgia Wolverine boots. They keep uh, fertilizer, lime, and grass seeds. All of that's at Ace Equipment Sales and Service in the Park Lane Plaza, Rutherfordton. And when you get hungry, need a cake or some donuts, uh, go by Granny B's, 219 West Main Street. Try that classic club sandwich on house-made sourdough bread with French fries or onion rings. Just $4.25 uh, there at Granny B's. You'll find them 219 West Main Street. And they'll be glad to bake that birthday cake for you. Happy birthday. We're being kind today to the spouses of all the law enforcement. And uh, not only spouses, but maybe even girlfriends. Don't you worry about your guy and get your gal when they go out on the call. Well, we are salute you this morning. We're being kind to you. Michelle Bridges works at Carolina House, is 51 today, having a birthday. Jim and Michelle Bridges of Dobbinsville. It's their fourth anniversary, is that right? And Kenzie Morrow is 12, goes to Chase Middle School. Want to wish Kenzie a happy, happy. Also celebrating on the 16th is Catherine Privet, Kenny Craig, Johnny Doddle, and Vaughn Goforth. So happy birthday to all these folks. And we'll be back to, with the drawing for the cake in just a moment. Harold Spurlick was product engineer at Ford Motor Company. The minivan would be a strong product line for the future, he argued. However, regardless of how hard he pushed, he could never get his point across. Perhaps the embarrassment and business failure of the Edsel car was too much for Ford to overcome. Fired from his job at Ford Motor, Spurlick headed to Chrysler. Lee Iacocca, Chrysler's new CEO, supported Spurlick. He favored the new concept. Together, Iacocca and Spurlick moved Chrysler into one of the most profitable products of the decade. The ability to stick with a product or a project long after others want to quit often makes the difference between failure and success. Persistence or tenacity, D.A. Benton writes, is not stubbornness elevated to the level of stupidity. It is commitment to the result regardless of what has to be endured along the way. The Bible reminds us that endurance or persistence is an important virtue. The Apostle Paul told his followers to endure hardship like a good soldier. He also reminded us that persistence is necessary if we plan to someday reign with Christ. You may be faced with a struggle to do right in a job where wrong is sometimes seen as a virtue. Press on. Your faith may be tested by those who have no faith. Keep believing. The victory does not go to those who give up, but to those who endure to the end. This is Bill Hostler with today's Key to Confident Living. And a big congratulations going out to Michelle Bridges, who works at Carolina Home Care, having a birthday. Also, just uh, Todd just re- informed me that it's also Michelle and Jim's anniversary. Jim and Michelle Bridges' anniversary, but Michelle on her birthday is one cake from Granny B. So uh, we'll have a certificate right here for her to come by and pick that up and enjoy. Now, coming up, we got a guest we'll be interviewing at 835 this morning about a subject you may want to know more about. we got news from here that we'll review the election returns for the local elections and how Rutherford County voted and uh, do some other stuff of importance that I think you might want to know about. I'd like to keep you informed 
as well as entertain. People say, uh, uh, Jim, I listen to you all the time. I say, well, just keep on listening. One of these days I might say something important. So stay tuned to AM 590 WCAB and Northland Cable Channel 5 WCAB, serving the foothills of the Carolinas. NCN News. I'm Mike Riley. Breaking news. President Barack Obama says he'll announce his Supreme Court nominee in a Rose Garden ceremony this morning. That's expected to be around 11 a.m. Four for Hillary Clinton and three for Donald Trump. That's the number of states the Democrat and Republican candidates are confirmed to have won in Tuesday's primaries. CBS News polling analyst Fred Backus breaks down the night for us when it comes to how evangelicals voted in Tuesday's primary. Ted Cruz and Donald Trump continue to wage a battle to capture evangelicals evangelical voters, with Cruz winning their vote in Missouri and Trump winning their vote in Florida. In North Carolina and Illinois, evangelical voters were divided about evenly. In Ohio, evangelical voters were divided between Donald Trump and John Kasich. The much-anticipated battle between Republican Governor Pat McCurry and Democrat Attorney General Roy Cooper is set for November. Cooper talked about his victory last night. Our state is going to be looking for positive leadership and a North Carolina that works for everyone not just the select few. Governor Pat McCorey last night discussed about his vision for the state and a new term via Facebook. We can't go back to the days of record high unemployment. We can't go back to the days of higher taxes and bigger government. We need a governor who will lead and who will do what's right to prepare our state for the future. Deborah Ross is a winner among the four Democratic candidates for the U.S. Senate seat that Republican Richard Burr holds now. She gave her victory speech in Raleigh criticizing the policies of Burr and other Republicans which he says folks aren't getting that fair shot because politicians like Richard Burr are stacking the decks against them. The dad whose job was outsourced because Richard Burr supported tax breaks for companies that ship jobs overseas. That's Deborah Ross last night. She meets incumbent Richard Burr. You're listening to NCN News. Want a quality education at an affordable cost? UNC Pembroke provides the type of personalized college education usually found at private schools with its small classrooms, low student-to-faculty ratio, and robust campus life. All these attributes, plus having one of the lowest tuition rates in the state, make University of North Carolina Pembroke worth taking a closer look. Come on out to the University Open House on April 16th at Givens Performing Arts Center and learn how UNC Pembroke is changing lives through education. Celebrate Festival 2016 with your friends at UNC TV. Enjoy the best in music, drama, and advice to improve your life. From Celtic Woman to Nitty Gritty Dirt Band to Frank Sinatra, they've got everyone's favorite tunes. Helpful hints from experts like Susie Orman and Dr. Mark Hyman will keep you both fiscally and physically fit. From public affairs to how-to programs to quirky specials, they've got it all. Join UNC TV for Festival 2016. Help to keep bringing PBS and more to all of North Carolina. Carolina. Raleigh City Council has given unanimous approval to a proposal to launch a test program for outfitting police officers with body cameras, a move coming less than a month after an officer shot a man to death. In a recent interview, Wake County District Attorney Lauren Freeman said while body cams are good tools, cost does have to be a consideration. The major cost involved with body cameras is not even the providing of the cameras itself, but the storage of all of that data. The Ferguson, Missouri City Council has agreed to a Justice Department plan to clean up its police department and court system. Correspondent Ross Simpson has that. The overhaul to accept JOD's plan to overhaul Ferguson's embattled police force and municipal court system was unanimous in the St. Louis suburb where the fatal police shooting of Michael Brown Jr. helped spark the Black Lives Matter movement. Brown's father attended the council meeting but didn't speak. A Justice Department lawsuit against Ferguson for rejecting the plan back in February over cost concerns is pending as a federal judge must still approve the preliminary agreement. America's second busiest subway system, the Washington, D.C. Metro, will shut down for a whole day for emergency inspections. Correspondent Martin DeCaro reports. Metro's general manager Paul Wiedefeld says the risk to passenger safety is low, but he's 
taking no chances after a track fire disrupted the Monday morning commute. Starting at midnight, the subway system will shut down for 29 hours for inspections of third rail jumper cables. When I say safety is our highest priority, priority I mean it. The cables were inspected last year after one passenger died and more than 80 others were sickened after an electrical malfunction caused smoke to fill their rail car. Monday's incident involved the same type of track-based power cables. Martin DeCaro, Washington. Mike Riley. Get your message to the thousands. Call the WCAB sales department today at 287-3356. <laughs> From ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. The battle lines have been drawn as President Obama prepares to announce his choice to fill the vacancy on the U.S. Supreme Court. Senate Republicans have announced their intention to stall any confirmation until a new president is elected, but President Obama is moving ahead anyway. The White House has not released a name, but ABC's Terry Moran has more about who's on the short list. Sri Srinivasan, he's considered the leading choice. Born in India, raised in Kansas, a judge here on the appeals court. Merrick Garland, 63 years old, older than most. He's the chief judge of the appeals court here, long seen as a moderate. And Paul Watford, a judge out in California. He'd be the court's third African-American. Maybe she's Terry Moran at the Supreme Court who says this is about to become, like everything else, a partisan war. It's still too close to call in the state of Missouri, but besides that, it was a clean sweep for Hillary Clinton on Tuesday. Donald Trump won for the Republicans in Illinois, Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida. ABC's Alex Stone with more of the Trump campaign in Palm Beach. Despite the support Trump has received and he got last night, there are still signs of problems in his future. Exit polling showing those who don't like Trump really don't like Trump. Six in ten Republicans who are non-Trump supporters say they would seriously consider a third-party candidate if Trump became the GOP nominee. Polls have shown in a matchup against Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, Trump would lose. 400,000 Americans were airlifted for medical emergencies last year, but many times they are forced to pay for it. Correspondent Brian Ross with one example uncovered by an ABC News investigation. The bill to airlift the daughter of Warren and Brenda Larson came to $47,000 for a 79-mile trip. And insurance only covered about a third of that. It's definitely going to cripple us financially. And as is standard, the Air Methods consent form Larson signed before the flight made no mention of the cost. Air Methods, the company involved, posted a $100 million profit last year. You're listening to ABC News. Attention all timeshare owners. Were you a victim of a high-pressure or dishonest timeshare sales agent? Were you confused with what you were buying or didn't provide what you were promised? Do you feel that you overpaid for your timeshare, can't afford it, or do you simply not use it anymore and just want out? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we can help. We're Timeshare Compliance, and every day we help hundreds of timeshare victims protect their rights. Our team can legally terminate your timeshare agreement, ending the payments forever, saving you thousands. In some cases, we can even get you a refund of the fees you previously paid. But you must act now. Call 800-811-7670 or visit timesharecompliance.com for a free consultation. We can help you save thousands, but only if you call 800-811-7670. Or visit TimeshareCompliance.com for an absolutely free consultation. That's 800-811-7670 or TimeshareCompliance.com. Commuters in the nation's capital are looking for ways to get around a system-wide shutdown of the metro. ABC Stephanie Ramos with more on how many people count on the subways in D.C. The gates are down and you don't hear trains pulling into the station every couple of minutes. It's a very different scene here at this metro stop in Washington, D.C., especially on an early weekday morning. Hundreds of thousands of commuters and tourists are looking for other ways to get around town as the entire D.C. metro rail system closes for an emergency safety inspection for a total of 29 hours. And it could get worse. If inspectors find faulty cables, the closure could be extended until repairs are made. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Washington. The Fed meets again later today to talk about interest rates. The Federal Reserve barely raised interest rates last December for the first time in many years and said it would do so again depending on inflation. When the Fed meets today, it's unlikely the cost of borrowing money will rise again, but investors expect Janet Yellen will predict the year's financial future and if the Fed might raise rates again before 2017. ABC's Andy Field. A teacher from Greensboro, Georgia has resigned after a high school student recorded him calling her, quote, the dumbest girl I have ever met. She says he added that her purpose in life would be to have sex and to have babies. The girl was recording the lesson on a school-issued iPad, too. 
Teacher apologized, resigned at a board meeting on Monday. This is ABC News. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. With a call to National Tax Helpline, you can stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Take down the number now for the Tax Helpline. 800-708-4718. That's 800-708-4718 for free information. 800-708-4718. I'm Sherry. When it's time for an oil refill, come on back to Divinity Oil, keeping families warm for years. Divinity Oil will be there for your family. Call Divinity Oil today, 286-3488. Check prices. You'll come back again to Divinity Oil. Ask about the Keep Fill Agreement. Never worry about running out of oil again. Divinity Oil Company is a company you can call a friend of the family. Come on back and stay warm this winter. Call Divinity Oil, Railroad Avenue, Rutherfordton, 286-3488. Now that's a warm feeling. Looks like we got a really, really nice March 16th to look forward to today with lots of sunshine and temperatures up into the low and mid-80s. Just amazing for this time of year. And then tonight, clear to partly cloudy and turning a bit cooler behind a cold front, but nothing drastic. Lows in the upper 40s, and then for Thursday, partly to mostly sunny and cooler, but still above normal, with high temperatures in the low and mid-70s. Now, more substantial cooling is likely as we head toward Friday and the weekend. I'm Greg Fischel in the Weather Center. And again, this morning, we're up and down the scale with our thermometer. We started out when I got here at 59, went to 57, down to 56. Now it's down to 53, but it should be going the other way, up to about 82 for our daytime high today. And it's going to be a beautiful day in the neighborhood. West wind, 4 to 11 miles per hour, gusting to 19 miles per hour today. And we're going to enjoy this warm weather all the way through until it gets uh, to about... Starts declining about Saturday with 57, 54 on Sunday, 59 on Monday. But the nighttime temperature is back down in the 30s. And on Tuesday of next week, 66 for a daytime high. So we'll uh, we'll see what's going to take place with all of that. Uh, hopefully not too cold that it's going to kill the flowers and the trees that are already blooming out and blossoming out. Hope not anyway. We'll keep our eye on that weather pattern and see what's going to take place. But spring is coming in here on the 20th. So that's, that's pretty soon. No, is it that right? Is that 20th? Yeah. And that's also Palm Sunday. Easter Sunday is the 27th. Easter's early. All righty. Let's see. Congratulations to Michelle Bridges. She won the cake this morning from Granny Beige. Works at Carolina Home Care. We want to wish her a happy, happy birthday and also happy anniversary. And we're being kind to all the spouses of the law enforcement. Everybody who... Uh, Wonders when their guys and gals go out to work, what's going to happen out there. We salute you, and we want to be kind to you all day today. Let's make it a good, good day. we got news from here and there. Going to give away a couple of tickets to the Country Ham and Chicken Pie Supper at Spencer Baptist Church coming up Saturday, March 19th. We'll do that this hour also. We've got a guest we'll be talking with about some alternative energy sources that we might look at and see how that's going to develop for folks in North Carolina. It's eight minutes past eight. Hello, folks. If you like eating as well as I do, then Fat Trace's Barbecue is the place. Not only their pulled pork barbecue sandwiches and baskets, but the ribs on the weekend will cause you want to come back again and again and again. Check on their daily specials, and I know you'll enjoy the smoked chicken. All their beef is certified black Angus. And remember, if you have a big appetite or just need a snack, let Fat Trace's Barbecue go to work for you. Tracy would be happy to handle your Boston butt fundraisers for you and your organization. It can help you make some money. Tracy will work with you. Got a meeting planned? Need a room? Or if you want it delivered to your location, leave it in the hands of Fat Tracy's Barbecue right on Main Street in Spindale. If you like good, then Fat Tracy's Barbecue is the place. Another question for the Tax Fact Street Team. Hey, IRS, is the fire we had in our kitchen a deductible loss? I'll tell you after this. New tax laws cause many taxpayers to lose hundreds or even thousands of dollars in refunds because they or their preparer did not know the changes, and the IRS likes it that way. But there is help available. At Central Tax Service, they will get you the biggest and fastest refund allowed by the IRS, guaranteed. Do yourself and not the government a favor. 
ever. Go see Roger Jolly at Central Tax Service at 542 Oak Street in Forest City or call them at 245-0557. With a bigger and faster refund, you will be glad you did. Losses in property value from unexpected events like hurricanes, fires, and floods are deductible. Even losses due to theft can qualify. Victims in federal disaster areas might even get a faster refund. Questions? Go to irs.gov. Now, deals from here and there, the couple that was killed in the house fire pit, uh, our neighbors up uh, McDowell, they're in Glen, <laughs> excuse me, they're in Glenwood. A preliminary autopsy report confirmed that the two people killed in that house fire in Glenwood Sunday were the occupants of the home, and they've been identified as 20-year-old Sierra Jade Newton and 23-year-old Victor Ivan Hernandez both of uh, Glenwood Drive off Old U.S. 221 South. Their house caught fire at approximately 8 a.m. Sunday. They were found deceased inside once the blaze was extinguished. The preliminary autopsy conducted Tuesday in Winston-Salem showed that both died of smoke inhalation. The cause of the fire is still under investigation by the McDowell County Sheriff's Office and the Bureau of Investigation. Well, the election, of course, was held across North Carolina yesterday. Rutherford County went out to, to vote for their favorite candidate, and Rutherford County, uh, Rutherford County voters chose Donald Trump on the Republican ticket and Hillary Clinton on the Democrat ticket. And for the county commissioner race in the Democrat primary for the county commissioner's race, they chose uh, Eddie Holland over Jerry Weiss. Eddie Holland, 2,575 votes. Jerry Weiss, 2,315. Very close race all evening. The Register of Deeds Republican primary, Rachel Thomas, ended up beating uh, Charles um, uh, Charles Mart- uh, Martell. Rachel, 4,394. And Chuck, 2,661. And Rutherford County also supported the bond referendum. So he's a, uh, and they voted for Trump, and they voted for a crew, uh, for Hillary, and they voted for Richard Burr and Linda Col, <coughs> excuse me, Linda Coleman for lieutenant governor in the Democrat side. And let's see, uh, but that, uh, I believe that's uh, probably pretty much it. The commissioners also met yesterday, Rutherford County commissioners, and members of the Rutherford County School Board and director of the Rutherford County Schools, Dr. Janet Mason met with the county commissioners to propose a referendum to increase sales tax. The increase in the sales tax would be used to fund the needs of the county schools. The commissioners approved the quarter-cent sales tax referendum to be put on the ballot while initially proposed on the June election. Commissioner Alan Tony amended that motion to push the date to the November presidential election date. More voters are expected to turn out for that election, and the date change will give more Rutherford County citizens the opportunity to decide on whether to approve the tax change. The motion was amended as amended was approved. So they're wanting you to vote on whether or not you want your taxes to increase here in Rutherford County. That'll be on the ballot in November. Well, Donald Trump won the North Carolina primary in North Carolina. By drawing from people in places outside the cities where jobs for the tech savvy are available, according to preliminary exit polls. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton took her party's presidential primary by capturing support from black voters, women, the affluent, and those struggling economically, according to the survey. Trump did best with voters in North Carolina suburbs, small towns, and rural areas. Republicans wanting a candidate who would bring change or who Tells it like it is, favored Trump, according to the exit early data from the Edison research. The, the businessman also was strongest among older voters. Men, those without a college degree, those who said they are somewhat conservative, and those in households making less than $50,000 a year. Trump also won with the nearly 6 in 10 GOP voters who said they felt betrayed by the Republican politicians. His backers also included one in seven primary voters who said they were military veterans, and he de- divided the backing of more again Christians with Texas Senator Ted Cruz. North Carolina also agreed to borrow the $2 billion for infrastructure for North Carolina, overwhelmingly Tuesday to borrow that $2 billion. The bond package 
backed by Republican Governor Pat McCrory and Democratic leaders as a bipartisan thing, won two-thirds of the vote. Their argument was the state has added two million people since the last borrowing package was approved in 2000. That kind of growth and the passage of time requires spending money. About two-thirds of the bond will go toward new buildings, repairs, and renovations at all University of North Carolina systems and community college campuses. Uh, Isothermal Community College will get a big hunk of that money, as will the North Carolina Zoo and Chimney Rock State Park and uh, some infrastructure needs across the state. There was uh, much organized opposition to the bond bill. Critics said there were unnecessary projects on the list and the things that needed to be built or repaired could be paid for without borrowing. But they acknowledged they had a tough fight. But it came up winning overwhelmingly. Fifteen minutes after eight o'clock, just a few minutes, we're going to give you a chance to win. Take it to a southern, to a country ham and chicken pie supper. It's going to be held over at Spencer Baptist Church. Other news from the world of elections in the U.S. Senate race held in North Carolina. The Republicans had a primary as well as did the Democrats, and North Carolina chose uh, Deborah Ross, the Democrat candidate, and Richard Burr, the Republican candidate. They'll be going head-to-head this fall. Former state representative Deborah Ross defeated three lesser-known opponents in the Democratic U.S. Senate primary, while incumbent Senator Richard Burr easily held off three challenges on the Republican side. Burr had 62%, well above his nearest challenger, Greg Brennan, who had 25%. Ross won with 63% of the Democrat vote, with Spring Lake Mayor Chris Ray polling a distant second with 16%. Durham businessman Kevin Griffin had 12%, and Greenville Army veteran Ernest Reeves had only 9%. So there'll be, be an interesting race between those two coming up in November. See how all that's going to work out. I'm sure you'll be hearing much from all of those folks. Citizens had an opportunity to give their opinion on the coal ash. Residents of the Cliffside community, church leaders, environment, environmentalists, political people, Republicans and Democrats, gathered in the library auditorium of Isothermal Community College Monday night. They asked that the coal ash basins at Duke Energy's Rogers facility in Cliffside be classified as intermediate or high priority by the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality. The priority classification determines when and how the coal ash basins will be closed. The Cliffside ash basins have already been classified low priority by the state, so they had a chance to voice their opinion on that at that public hearing the other night. The North Carolina Governor Highway Safety Program and state and local law enforcement are set to kick off St. Patrick's Booze It and Lose It enforcement campaign today. The North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program will begin at St. Patrick's Booze It and Lose It enforcement campaign with a kickoff featuring state and local law enforcement as well. So we watch it out for that. They'll be watching out for you. Booze It and lose it across the state during St. Patrick's Day weekend. St. Patrick's Day is the 17th, but folks will be partying all weekend, I suspect, in that respect. Now, some of the things from here and there this morning on our news clip, and we'll be back with that sheriff's report with Officer Brendel in just a minute. Do you need a legal consultation regarding wills, real estate closings, Medicaid planning, or just legal representation? Contact attorneys Gerald N. Willis or Kent Baldwin at the Arledge Law Firm on East Court Street in Rutherfordton. With years of experience and expertise, Arledge Law Firm is your local professional law firm that really cares about their clients, whatever situation you are facing. Call on Arledge Law Firm at 828-287-3338. That's 828-287-3338. Let this professional team go to work for you. The following is a medical minute from Rutherford Regional Health System. 
Recent statistics indicate that nearly half of all men and a third of all women in the United States will experience a cancer diagnosis within their lifetime. If you or a loved one experiences cancer, you should choose a cancer program based on its advanced technology, its coordination of care among specialists, its patient navigation program, its convenient support services, and its cancer survivorship program. Here in Rutherford County, the cancer program of Rutherford Regional Health System features all of that and more. In fact, the cancer program at Rutherford Regional is a nationally certified cancer program, which means access to the full scope of services to diagnose, treat, rehabilitate, and support patients with cancer. To learn more, visit MyRutherfordRegional.com and click on the Services tab. Here is Officer Brandol now with our report from the Sheriff's Department. Past 24 hours, the Sheriff's Office has answered 169 calls, processed 20 arrests, and currently have 158 in the jail. Under our arrest reports, we have a James Glover, a 30-year-old black male of Spindale, charged with traffic and cocaine, possession with intent to manufacture, sell, or deliver Schedule 2, and maintaining a place for a controlled substance, given a $50,000 secure bond. We have a Melissa Barnes, 40-year-old white female of Far City, charged with failure to appear on a misdemeanor, given a $4,000 secure bond. We have a Shana Benfield, 33-year-old white female of Spindale, charged with simple assault and damage to uh, property, given a 48-hour uh, hold. We have a Darren Martin, 29-year-old white male of Spindale, charged with failure to appear on misdemeanor given a $500 secure bond. And we have a Bobby Cook, 32-year-old white male of Ellenburg, charged with felony larceny, given a $5,000 secure bond. Under our instance, we have a Richard LaForge of Highway 64 in Rutherfordton, uh, reported a larceny of a dog and misdemeanor larceny. Taken there was a German Shepherd and uh, two, two drop cords. Uh, we have a William Smith of Landrum, South Carolina, reported a obtained property by false pretense and attempted obtained property by false pretense. Incident occurred at the bank on Butler Road in Far City. Uh, two subjects attempted to cash uh, fraudulent checks. Um, we have a Kathy Robson from Newton Cole Road in Far City reported a financial card fraud and obtained property by false pretense. We have a Candy Austin, Gun Club Road, Bostick, reported larceny of farm. Taken there was a 22 caliber handgun. And we have Bubba's General Store, Main Street, Chimney Rock, reported a felony larceny. Taken there was one orange golf gas pump. And that's all we have for you this morning, Jim. Officer Brando reporting for us this morning from the Sheriff's Department. A lot of stations can play great music, but it's what we do between the music that sets us apart. Serving the foothills of the Carolinas, we're Family Friendly Radio, WCAB. 64% of North Carolina voters support producing offshore oil and natural gas resources, yet we still have critics that say we shouldn't do that. I'll be talking in just a few moments with David McGowan. He'll be talking about that particular situation and why that's important to for us to hear. We'll have him on about 8.35 this morning. Meanwhile, another heads up, U.S. Uh, Marshals have, are warning the public of jury duty phone scams. How this works, uh, scammers are using jury duty as part of their latest scheme. The U.S. Marshals Service is warning the public of a nationwide telephone scam involving individuals claiming to be U.S. Marshals, court officers, or law enforcement officials seeking to collect a fine in lieu of arrests for failing to report for jury duty. The U.S. Marshals Service does not call anyone to arrange payment of fines over the phone for failure to appear for jury duty or any other infraction. In order to appear more credible, the scammers may even provide information like badge numbers and the names of actual federal judges and courthouse addresses. Victims have been told they can avoid arrest by paying a fine using a reloadable credit card and were urged to call the number and provide their own credit card number and 
to initiate this payment. The Marshal Service urges the public not to divulge any personal or financial information to anyone that you don't know about, even if they sound legitimate. According to the release, they may not be, so don't give them any personal information about your bank account, your Social Security number, your your credit card numbers. Anyone who thinks they were a victim of a jury duty scam is encouraged to report the incident to local law enforcement department or a local U.S. Marshals or FBI office because they're out there scamming folks every day. You, you get a call, they say, you did not report for jury duty on such, such date, but we will not uh, lock you up if you will send this so much money to this address. It'll take, take care of that, and you will not be harassed today. And, you know, you know you, you, you're you scared. You think, well, maybe I got one. I just overlooked it, or maybe I misplaced it and didn't call in my turn. Well, it's a scam, folks. They don't, the uh, U.S. Marshal Service don't deal in those kind of things. But uh, just ignore, ignore it or report it to the local officials. Sports update is next here on AM 590. NCN Sports, I'm Josh Zach. Play-in winners claim two slots in the big bracket during the first night of the first four portion of the NCAA tournament. Florida Gulf Coast coasted to a 96-65 win over overmatch Fairleigh Dickinson in Dayton. Knights coach Greg Horanda says losing in the tournament is tough. I told my team there's going to be 67 teams that have the same feeling that we have. But the feeling, no matter when it happens, is uh, really harsh and difficult. The Eagles move on to play top seed North Carolina in the East Region on Thursday. In the nightcap, Wichita State eliminated Vanderbilt 70-50. to Commodores coach Kevin Stallings says key players he usually depends on didn't produce like they usually do. But overall, the effort was okay. We're very disappointed to lose, but... Um proud of my team. I'm proud of their effort. Wichita State moves on to play Arizona Thursday. Meanwhile, the second half of the Dayton games tonight pit Holy Cross against Southern. That game will be followed by Michigan against Tulsa. NIT finals last night. Florida State edged Davidson 84-74 and shorthanded South Carolina. Cruise past High Point 88-66 to move on to the second round. On the ice, the Washington Capitals are the first NHL team to clinch a playoff position. They collected win number 50 in a 2-1 overtime decision against Carolina. Alex Ovechkin scored the winner a minute 38 into the extra session, but it never should have happened. The NHL Situation Room initiated a review to see if the Caps had possession and control of the puck when they entered the Carolina zone prior to Ovechkin's goal. The play was ruled legal, but Kane's head coach Bill Peters doesn't agree. Look at the clip at 14.08 on the third on the Skinner entry, and then look at the entry on the uh, overtime and tell me the difference. And the league will obviously, right? Everyone will want to know because the whole league will see it. So the league will have a really good conversation with them. Despite the OT loss, the Canes did pick up a point for the sixth straight game, and they stay alive in the playoff hunt. This is NCN Sports. Welcome, caller. You are on the air. Hi, I'm stuck in this tiny office all day. I feel trapped. I need to be free. You need AT&T Go Phone. Huh? When you switch to AT&T Go Phone, you get your second month free. Nice. A free second month. Yes. With a free second month, when you switch to AT&T Go Phone, no tiny office walls can confine your spirit. You're so right. Thanks. Now go. Be free. I'm going to... AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Get your second month free of unlimited talk, text, and data usage with the first two gigabytes at high speed when you switch to AT&T Go Phone. $40 a month after $5 auto refill discount. In store or at att.com slash switch to go. Pay $45 for the first month. $5 discount applied to monthly rate plan charge upon enrollment and auto refill. After first two gigabytes, data speeds reduced up to 128 kilobytes per second. Second month free offerings March 31st and requires porting eligible number and eligible service. Free month equals value with monthly plan activated. Visit a store or att.com slash switch to go for details. A tradition at the Masters is about to end. Since 2007, Arnold Palmer has hit the ceremonial tee shot to open the Masters Golf Tournament. But Palmer's 86 now and says he no longer has the physical capability to hit the ball the way he'd want to. Palmer will go to the first tee with the chairman, but he'll watch as Jack Nicklaus and Gary Player do the honors. Arnold Palmer holds the Masters record for playing 50 consecutive years, winning the championship four times. He's disappointed about not hitting that opening shot, but he says time moves on.
Bill Whitney, CBS News. Adam LaRoche surprised the Chicago White Sox, telling them he intends to retire. He leaves $13 million on the table. The 36-year-old LaRoche signed a two-year deal for $25 million with the team just a year ago, but struggled in 2015, batting just 207 with 12 homers. Josh Zach, NCN Sports. Hello, this is Dwayne Hunt with Insurance Services Associates. Are you on disability? Or maybe you're on Medicare? Or maybe both? Come see me, Dwayne Hunt at Insurance Service Associates, about a Medicare Advantage product brought to you by Humana. Please give me a call, 245-5301 at Insurance Service Associates, 127 East Trade Street, Forest City. Coming up, Helton. I put it on about a nine and a half right now. Harvick. I don't think there's any real love lost between the two of us. Johnson. Maybe a four-letter word or two crossed through my mind as well. And Biffle. I love playing out there. I got to play, sir. Mark Garrow and PRN's Garage Pass. This is the place. The gathering place of all 50 states and 26 countries. The place to raise a toast. Celebrate the competitive spirit. Get a little sideways. And in 2016, the place with Colossus. The world's largest outdoor center-hung video display. Be a part of it all April 17th for the Food City 500. It's not just a race. It's Bristol, baby! Time to winterize or store your power equipment. Add ZMAX Microlubricant to the fuel system and crankcase for easier starts this winter and next spring. ZMAX Microlubricant for two or four stroke gas or diesel engines, chainsaws, snow and leaf blowers, ATVs, boat engines, generators, tillers, lawnmowers, tractors, everyday driver, or storing a collector car. Cold starts are easier with ZMAX Microlubricant. Get the story at ZMAX.com and get ZMAX Microlubricant at auto parts retailers everywhere. The new Sprint Cup Series season has gotten off to a strong start with photo finishes in half of the events run to date. NASCAR Vice Chairman Mike Helton. Well, I think four races in, it's been interesting, particularly the three intermediate-sized tracks we've been on. And the guys seem to be enjoying the race cars, and if the drivers are enjoying what they're doing, that, that contributes a lot to the show. <coughs> That's just the kind of racing you like to watch. and. And they, the drivers are having fun out there, and they're they're showing the fans how much fun it is. What's your rating so far? I put it on about a nine and a half right now. The Phoenix photo finish, in the meantime, would certainly get a ten, with Kevin Harvick barely holding off Carl Edwards, a guy he's not exactly buddy buddy with. I don't think there's any real love lost between the two of us. So, um, you know, I knew that I was going to get hit, and I'm going to hit him. You know, just in the same type of manner, just for the fact that I don't want to spit him out. But you definitely want to rough him up because that's not the guy that I want to lose to, and I know he doesn't want to lose to me. Did you know with rookie Ryan Blaney knocking down back-to-back -back top 10 finishes at Las Vegas and Phoenix, that's the first time the Wood Brothers Racing Team has done that since 2005 when they turned the trick with Ricky Rudd. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson had one of the scariest things that could happen to a driver happen to him at Phoenix when the steering wheel came off during a qualifying run. As to what went through his mind at that moment. Hold on, maybe a four letter word or two crossed through my mind as well. But when I saw the blue and, and the angle that I was at, the speed I was at, I knew it was gonna be a big impact. And then I was just so thankful when I came off the wall that feet, legs, arms, wrists, head was all fine and nothing was hurting. When's the best time to enjoy twisted tea? Why don't we do it? A hard iced tea brewed like a beer that tastes like real iced tea because it's made with real iced tea. Hanging out at the pool, fishing with your buddy. Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea tastes great anytime. Cool, refreshing, smooth, but with a kick. Why don't we do a little day drinking? Twisted Tea, real iced tea taste with a kick. Twisted Tea Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio, drink responsibly. The third and final Sprint Cup race of the West Coast Swing will take place in Fontana, California this weekend, which is why, following Phoenix, Greg Biffle decided not to head back east. Just planning on going back out to the desert. I love I love playing out there. I got a place there, so uh, I'm going to go spend two or three days out there and then head over to Fontana. Mark Garrow and PRN's Garage Pass, brought to you by Twisted Tea. Come by today and see Jacob and all the fine folks at Broadway Tire Service. They're locally owned and offer full auto service, tires, brakes, alignments. They also carry a full line of custom rims and accessories to make your vehicle look brand new again. They also offer pick and delivery. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, Saturday, 8 till noon. Call 245-4505. Broadway Tire Service, West Main Street in Forest City. 
Looks like we got a really, really nice March 16th to look forward to today with lots of sunshine and temperatures up into the low and mid 80s. Just amazing for this time of year. And then tonight, clear to partly cloudy and turning a bit cooler behind a cold front, but nothing drastic. Lows in the upper 40s, and then for Thursday, partly to mostly sunny and cooler, but still above normal, with high temperatures in the low and mid-70s. Now, more substantial cooling is likely as we head toward Friday and the weekend. I'm Greg Fischel in the Weather Center. We're off to a great start weather-wise this morning. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. We're up to 54 degrees, climbing to about 82 and sunny skies today. Wind will be gusting to about 19 miles per hour today, dropping back to... 45 tonight with the wind value about 13 miles per hour gust. And then the weather pretty good until we get to the weekend. It looks like we may have some showers to deal with on Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night, and mostly sunny again on Monday. And the temperature is dropping the first of the week back down to wintertime. So we've got spring, summer, and winter right here all in a matter of a few days. But we've had that before, right? If you don't like our weather, hang around a few minutes. It's going to change. 54 degrees right now and clear skies. Well, we talk a lot, and we hear people talk a lot about we need some alternative ways to get fuel. And uh, offshore drilling is one of those ways that's been talked about. I hear people say all the time we shouldn't be so dependent on foreign oil. And uh, David McGowan, who is the, the, the executive director of the North Carolina Petroleum Council, the uh, the state affiliate for the American Petroleum Institute, and he's on the phone with me right now to talk about a recent poll that was taken in North Carolina and also the benefits of offshore drilling. David, good morning. David, good morning. How you doing? Well, I thought he was on the phone. He was there right just a moment ago. David McGowan, good morning. Well, don't know what's happened to him. Maybe he, uh, maybe he hung up. Anyway, maybe we'll get maybe we'll get him back on the phone. But anyway, the uh, poll was made. Sixty-three percent of North Carolina voters support producing offshore oil and natural gas resources, and that that uh, is something that is a controversial matter to a lot of people. A lot of folks say we don't need to do that. Don't need to mess up our shores. And we, but we continue to, in my opinion, sell our souls to the foreign oil people. We'll see if he's there now. David, you there? No, nope, I guess not. Okay. Well, we're going to have to uh, move on. Um, We had him. We had him connected to talk with his uh, secretary or his uh, appointments uh, guru there, and but he he was going. Anyway, he he is uh, uh, doing these talk shows to talk about how strong bipartisan majority of voters in North Carolina continue to support producing more domestic energy and creating more jobs in the state, and cutting edge technologies and a core value of safety have helped make the. Uh, All right, we've got him back on the phone now. David, good morning. How you doing? Doing all right this morning? Hello, David, are you there? I'm here. All right, good. I don't know if having some technical difficulties with the phone, apparently, but we're glad that I've introduced you as being the executive director of the North Carolina Petroleum Council and the work that you're doing in that respect. Uh, and I wanted you to talk with you a little bit more about the importance of what this poll indicated 64% of North Carolina voters support producing offshore oil and natural gas resources, but yet still there, there's still some controversy over that, isn't there? Well, there is, and just yesterday, Jim, the Obama administration dropped his plans to include the Atlantic in, in a lease sale that would have been held in 2021, and so it's, a, it's very unfortunate and disappointing, I guess not entirely surprising given that the president seems to be catering to the interest of, of the extreme environmental groups and, and others on this particular issue. The fact of the matter is that, as you said, 64% of registered North Carolina voters support offshore drilling and understand the benefits that would come to our state in the form of energy security, economic security, as well as national security. Studies have been done and tests have been made uh, with the petroleum companies. They they pretty well assured themselves of the fact that there's not going to be any mass spillings that they best they can tell, and it's pretty safe to do this offshore drilling, isn't it? 
Well, it's very safe, and it's much safer than it has been in the past, Jim, in large, large part due to efforts that the industry has made voluntarily to improve the safety and security of our operations, in addition to all the uh, new regulations that the federal government has put in place over the last five years or so. We've got the Center for Offshore Safety, which is a third-party auditing organization that does nothing but audit the safety and environmental practices and policies and equipment for the offshore industry. And we also have two 911 response forces for the industry now that we didn't previously have uh, five years ago during the incident in the Gulf. And so the, the, the safety of the industry has improved dramatically. Uh, and and it's, it, this is definitely something that can be done safely and responsibly off the Atlantic coast just as it's being done in other areas of the world, including in the Gulf of Mexico and even off the California coast. We know the majority of the voters, of course, uh, support this. Is the General Assembly pretty much in step with this as well, or in the governor, or how, how, what's their position on it? The General Assembly and the Governor have been supportive, and um, unfortunately this is almost solely a federal government decision, and, and so it, it, the Obama administration yesterday uh, decided to, to not move forward with the process, and, and the disappointing part about that is we were so early in the process, we really haven't had an opportunity to make an informed decision on, on the issue that lies ahead. and. Um, this is a long-term prospect, and it takes a, a, a long amount of time to do the due diligence necessary to go out and explore and produce the resources off our coast. And so we've really hamstringed ourselves and, and tied our hands behind our back from being able to, uh, when we potentially need to go produce those resources, to be able to do that in a timely fashion. What would it mean to North Carolina and the, Mar and the nation as a whole if we were able to do this offshore drilling? Well, it certainly would have created a, a lot of jobs up and down the East Coast and specifically here in North Carolina as well as a lot of economic development and revenue both for the state and for the country. In addition to that, it provides, and, and perhaps most importantly, it would provide energy security for the country uh, in a time when we certainly need to be producing more of our own domestic energy sources here at home and not relying on countries that don't share our own interests. And so, Again, it's, it's disappointing from that respect that um, we have the opportunity to secure our energy future while at the same time creating jobs and, and economic development in, in areas of the country and the state that desperately need them uh, and do it with, with an industry that obviously can create those good paying jobs and, the, and that stable livelihood uh, for its employees. And so we're, we're, we're disappointed in the President's decision and we think it's very short sighted. I know we'll lose a lot of valuable months and, and months ahead, but with a new president uh, being elected, uh, will that could that be changed? Can they turn that around and uh, support that? It, it could be changed, but uh, the way that, that President Obama has structured this, it would make it very difficult for the new president to, to come in and change that decision at this point. They would have to start the process all over again from, from square one, um, which would at least take two to three additional years that – it, quite frankly, we, we really don't have, Jim. We, we need to know what the resources are off our coast at, at a minimum, again, so that we can make informed decisions about whether we go out and further explore and produce those resources. And um, with the President's decision yesterday, it would, it would require that process to start all over again, and, and it's, it's likely that process could not start until the year 2022 at the earliest. So. Um, at least another six, seven years before we can, we can have this discussion again and, and potentially move forward with this process. North Carolina had the potential to become a leading producer of energy in the southeast with that possibility, but now it looks like what I'm hearing you saying is it looks like it's been canned. It's been canned, and, and um, we still encourage folks that, that have an interest and, and want to see uh, more domestic energy here at home to, to contact their member of Congress and to contact the White House and express their disappointment in this decision. Uh, it's very important that the people make their voice heard. Well, the offshore drilling is something that's been talked about for a long time, and I know the environmentalists are certainly opposed to those kinds of things, but with the offshore platforms, uh, would not be visible from land, as I understand. Uh, it's about 50 miles offshore past the horizon, so it's not, it's not a, it, would, it would not be a visible problem for anybody to see it's just one of those things environmentalists get to get their teeth in it, it's hard to pull it away from them isn't it 
Well, it, it is, and, and it's, it's one of those things where fear and emotion trump facts and logic six days a week and twice on Sunday, Jim, and that's really unfortunate um, that, that fear and emotion dictated uh, the policy decisions of the White House on this particular issue. As you said, the platforms, uh, if there were even platforms, there, there likely would have been a lot of subsea production off the Atlantic coast, and that would have you, you wouldn't have seen that if it was a mile offshore. But the fact of the matter was that the, the federal government had a 50-mile buffer in place to protect uh, the, the needs of the coast and, and tourism and fishing and, and our military's training capabilities. Uh, and so none of this activity would have taken place within 50 miles of the coast. It all would have been well offshore out of sight and, and certainly out of the way of, of some of our, our critical uh, needs, both from a tourism and, and recreation perspective as well as from our military. I agree that producing uh, more domestic oil and natural gas could help strengthen America's national security as well as lessening the negative impact of political instability occurring in other parts of the world if we had, if we had that kind of stability here. But apparently we're still going to have to remain dependent on our folks who don't like us too good. Well, we, we are for the time being, and that's why, again, it's, it's important that folks make their vo voice heard and, and ask the president to continue moving this process forward. The, the final decision on this plan isn't made until uh, sometime in November of this year, and so there's still an opportunity uh, for, the, for the, the citizens of the country that support more domestic energy exploration and development to, to share that opinion with the president and ask him to please change his mind on this. David, what's the best way to do that? By letter, by email, by, uh, what's the best way to contact? Well, there's, there's a public comment period that will open up in the next couple weeks here. Um, on, on the Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management website, and uh, so folks can do that. They'll also be holding public meetings across the state and up and down, uh, up and down the East Coast from what we anticipate, and so people can attend a meeting in person and submit comments, and then, of course, uh, we, we would always encourage people to contact the White House directly, either, either by email or, or by phone, and, and you, can, you can look that up online and and get that contact information for the White House. David McGowan, the Executive Director of the North Carolina Petroleum Council, my guest this morning, uh, giving us some insight into this controversial thing. But as we mentioned, uh, most of the people in North Carolina support it. And, uh, but the White House chose to ignore our wishes and desires again. So, David, thanks for the good work you're doing and appreciate your time this morning. Thanks very much, Jim. Always a pleasure talking to you. Good to see you. Bye-bye. That's David McGowan. Appreciate his time this morning on that issue, and that's another one of those issues that uh, the voice of the people is uh, irrelevant to this White House. 846, and congratulations to Michelle Bridges, who works at Carolina Home Care, and she won the cake this morning, and I understand it's also hurt her husband's uh, anniversary. So we're being kind to the wives and spouses of all the law enforcement, wives, spouses, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever the case happens to be. If you're going out there uh, on the roads and, and investigating domestic problems, we know it's a dangerous kind of lifestyle. And so we salute the spouses who send their spouses off with love. I'll be back in just a moment. Folks, I'm happy to announce to you that Quick Lots Half Price Bargain Store is back in town and open at the Tri City Mall. After some restructuring, Quick Lots Half Price Bargain Store is now specializing in name brand small appliances and high end toys and many other items at Quick Lots discount prices vacuums, coffee makers, humidifiers, microwaves, and so much more. And coming soon, a new electronics department featuring laptops, cell phones, computers, and more. Check out the Curiosity Center. Be great for students and collectors. Insects enclosed in glass. There's a frog, tarantula, butterfly, and a whole lot more. If you sell online or the flea market, you can buy in bulk at Quick Lots and make yourself a lot of money. And Samuel can give you instructions on how to make it more profitable. It's worth a stroll through. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 o'clock until 6 o'clock. Quick Lots half price bargain store in the Tri City Mall. Hi, this is Susan, your friendly server at Smith's Drugs. You know, I just love working at Smith's. It's kind of like I'm serving my family, so why don't you all come on in, have some good food, and join the Smith's family. Got a great pimento cheese sandwich down there, I'll tell you for sure. Hey, listen, I want to thank all of you who went out to vote yesterday. I know some of you didn't, chose not to do it for whatever reason. But those of you who did, I thank you for utilizing that great American 
opportunity that we have here in America. As long as we have it, we should exercise that and vote. One of these days, perhaps, we'll look around and may not have that privilege. Somebody may have taken that away from us. We need to stay alert and stay involved. And here's a story out of Seattle, Washington. A 90-year-old Seattle man has been charged, 90-year-old man has been charged in a sex assault. Yeah, the attorney general's of the, the attorney's office in Seattle charged a 90-year-old man with sexual assault from an incident inside a senior housing complex. The 66-year-old alleged victim says her elderly attacker isn't the only one to blame because the suspect had a similar incident four years ago. I was so shocked. Senior Housing Assistance Group uh, Home knew about this, says SHAG resident Linda Malone. Malone is the Tennis Association president of New Haven Apartments in North Seattle. And in January, 90 years old, 90-year-old Abraham King, I make that King, Abraham King, contacted her to donate a bath stool to any resident who might need it. Well, according to a report filed with Seattle Police, Malone reported that King asked for a hug while he was in her apartment. I hesitated, but I let him and he grabbed me inappropriately. He put his hands all over my bottom and pulled me to him. Malone says he talked about his ability to still have sex at his age and commented on her. I was afraid at that point. I didn't know where this was going. So she made a phone call, and, or rather a phone call came in and interrupted them, and Kang left the apartment at that time. Malone called uh, the police, and that's when she learned that this was not the older man's first brush with the law. He seemed like he's been going around doing that before. Seattle police told her that in 2012, the family of a 92-year-old resident complained that Kang had groped their mother. At the time, Kang lived at Shag's Cedar Park Complex in the Lake City neighborhood. Her family said the woman was too embarrassed to press charges, but she told Police gang had grabbed my breasts and groped her so that she was grabbed her other places as well. Family member who asked that her name not be used said they considered filing a restraining order against him. However, she said they changed their mind when Shag management said they would move him out of the building. That's when he moved to New Haven where Linda Malone lives. Shag has done this to us, Malone said. They moved somebody that they knew was a danger from one shag building to another. So in a statement, shag executive director Jane Woodford denies that. He said Kang wasn't transferred by shag. He said Kang moved to a new building on his own, as is common with the residents. Woodford said since no charges were filed in the earlier case, there wasn't there was no reason to warn New Haven residents about Kang's arrival. Linda Malone has been involved in a bitter dispute with Shag. She's one of the tenants' associate presidents from four Shag buildings, along with the Washington Tenants Union. Malone says Shag has retaliated by evicting her for her outspokenness. Wolford denies that and says she's being evicted because she harasses others in the building. Kang will appear in court later this month on a charge of misdemeanor assault with sexual motivation. So there you go, folks. And he, in his 90s, and he's still groping people. Oh, well. What can I say? You remember the story back a few weeks ago um, at one of the Cruz rallies? Ted Cruz was having a rally, and uh, there was a pastor that prayed at the rally. He was shot right after that. The pastor who was shot six times in his church parking lot on Sunday. After that, after he prayed with Cruz at the rally, he was shot six times in his parking lot. He's regained consciousness now and what many are calling a miraculous recovery. Charisma News reports that Tim Remington, who is the pastor of the Altar Church in Coile Aline, Idaho, was shot six times by suspect Kyle Odom, who reportedly scoped out the church before the shooting. Remington was taken to Continua Health and Medical Center where he was treated for his injuries. He recently regained consciousness, and his condition has been upgraded to fair. He opened one eye and gave me a thumbs up, said Altar Church Outreach Pastor John Padula. It's absolutely unbelievable. Without God, there is no way he'd be here. They call it a miracle. And the shooter, Odom, is reported to be a former Marine with a history of mental illness. A manhunt for Odom is underway. Remington had spoken and given a prayer at a rally for Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz. 
the day before being shot. It's not known if there is a connection between Remington's presence at the rally and his being shot. They don't know the circumstances yet. They are searching for the shooter. And there seems to be a lot of anger. A lot of anger. A lot of people are angry about something. My goodness, get alive, folks. See you back here tomorrow, bright and early, 6 o'clock. Then tomorrow morning at 8.35, Dr. Bob will be in the Blue Room, holding off his hours with Dr. Bob's grocery store medicine and healthy life anecdote. This is Wednesday. It's Oldies Day in the Blue Room. So long, everybody. Oh, by the way, I forgot to give those tickets away to the Country Ham and Chicken Pie Supper. If you'll be caller number three, you've got yourself two tickets. Caller number three, it's Saturday, March 19th at Spencer Baptist Church in Spindale. Country Ham and Chicken Pie Supper. Caller number three, call now at 287-3356, and you got yourself free meal. CN News. I'm Mike Riley. Attorney General Roy Cooper and Governor Pat McCory have won their gubernatorial primary, setting up a general election battle for November. McCory last night talked about his vision for the state and a new term via Facebook. We need a governor who will continue to focus on jobs and the economy and will focus on improving education and raising teacher pay. Not someone who won't show up for work when it matters.